Hello and welcome to Perfect Track. I hope you had a nice April. Last month I made this jacket and I beaded it all over with lots of different dark blue glass beads and I was very happy with the way it turned out. The next week I did a quarterly review of all the jackets I've made in the past three months. Can't show you them because I have packed them away to make room for the new stuff. Then in week three I beaded these jackets. I'm so happy with the way they turned out. I actually added a little more beading to the cuffs of the red and hot pink one after I'd done the video because I enjoyed making that one so much. But yeah, thrilled with the way those three turned out. And then I ended the month with a fabric haul of my cotton prints and some plans for the spring and summer of what I was going to make with all of them. And now for my May plans. In week one, I'm going to do the beading on the red plaid jacket that I made earlier this year. In week two, I am finally going to make myself a khaki jacket out of this beautiful Linton tweed that's khaki or army green and black. I look forward to that. Last month when I made this jacket, I also intended to show you um, sort of the difference between techniques you use to, um, for an AB cup versus a C or a D cup. But because um, I'm an A cup, so I've only been showing how I make my jackets. And yeah, a couple of you asked if I could talk about, a, you know, something for a larger bust size. And I did intend to, but uh, making this jacket was such a nightmare. I had to sort of undo a lot of things and then completely redo them different ways. So yeah, it sort of ran over. And then I was going to do a separate standalone for um, techniques, couture techniques for A and B cup versus C and D cups when making a jacket. But um. Yeah, the thing is, if I was a C or a D cup, I'd use it, I'd probably go for a bolero or a, a blazer jacket. I wouldn't necessarily wear a, like a boxy Chanel that sort of, yeah, de-emphasized what hourglass sort of figure I had. And yeah, but then, um, yeah. So I didn't know, but you know, it's none of my business what sort of jacket other people want to wear. If they want to wear a Chanel type jacket, then that's their prerogative, not mine. So I thought it was because I, I love wearing really baggy dresses just because I do. And people always, always, always go on to me about, oh, you can't wear that. You should wear something that's, you know, f flatters your figure, rah, rah, rah. So yeah, I wasn't sure whether to um, just talk about techniques or mention other dress. I think I'll just mention other jacket types in passing and um, yeah, and just talk about techniques for A and B versus C and D cup. I think I'll do that because uh, I don't, yeah. I mean, I want to be informative, but I don't want to be, you know, dictate what people should or shouldn't wear. So anyway, yeah, I'll, um, I'll talk about the various couture techniques that you can use when I'm making the, um, the khaki jacket, because that's just making the jacket and yeah, I'll have time to talk about the various techniques and yeah just show you how you to make the jacket using this technique and then showing a few steps using another technique that sort of thing so I think that's how I'll <laughs> solve that and yeah and then after I've done that 
the next week will be a fabric haul. Well, it's a flower and fabric and sequin haul to be precise, because Joanne's had a super sale on during Easter and a lot of it was just online stuff. So yeah, and I wanted to make, um, I'll show you some of the jackets that I've wanted to make and I have wanted to try and reproduce them for years. And um, I'll show you some of them. These shots were taken during um, Paris Fashion Week a few years ago. That jacket is gorgeous. This was the Hydrangea Dress by Lee Alexander McQueen, Divine. The same collection, he did this jacket that's beige tulle with hydrangeas sticking out the cuffs and the collar. Structurally, it's just amazing. So I'd love to do something inspired by that. Not exactly like it. And then we have Lesage for Chanel. Oh, this red sequin one's pretty fabulous. And I just love these flowers on the bottom. They are magnificent. And the entire jacket is sequin, like embellished. It's just a marvel. I would love to try and do something inspired by that. And then of course there's the famous Dolce Gabbana one that's either 56,000 or 52,000 depending on which article you read. Yes, so when I saw when I clicked on the site and I saw that all these beautiful this was my gateway flower, these geraniums. I just think they're so cute and cheerful and um when I saw them, I was like, oh, I could just buy the one. And then, of course, I bought a lot more, a lot more. I, I have vases of flowers just sitting around everywhere at the moment. I know with unboxings, you're supposed to keep stuff in the box and unbox it on camera. But Joanne sent me the um, flowers in. I guess they only had some at different stores. So they sent me them in lots of different packages. So, I mean, I had to open them up anyway. And then, yeah, I'm basically running out of jars and vases because I've used up so many of them. Anyway, so I will do a fabric and flower haul in um, that week. And then the next week, I think I will start one of the flower jackets. I I think I'll probably do the Dolce Gabbana inspired one. Maybe, I think. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> it depends how much work there is involved, but I, I think that's the one that I will do because it's sort of, I think I'll be able to finish that one. And then in the last week, I am going to do the beading on the green Gucci jacket and finally finish that one off. I've got something really unusual in mind for that one. So hopefully it works. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> so yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. So that is what I've got planned for the month of May. So thank you for watching and I hope you check in sometime this month.